You are now listening to the War Report Podcast Network. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the College Loop Podcast, episode 266 of the College Loop Podcast. I am Dylan Warren, Eddie Boy Tech on Twitter. I don't know what just happened. Weird intro already. Uh, I got, like, kicked off the page as the intro was playing, so I completely got thrown for a loop on that one. But I am Dylan Warren, Eddie Boy Tech on Twitter. If I didn't say that already, I'm already just out of a loop right now. Uh, but I'm here to keep y'all in the loop regarding Auburn Athletics. Now, we have a pretty packed show to talk about the night we have football we have basketball and of course we have gymnastics to talk about the day now starting off i do want to talk about this upcoming game i usually react to the hugh freeze press conference but honestly this press conference didn't really tell us too much i mean it was a lot of uh hugh freeze talking about how he's a him and eli drinkwitz are good friends with each other um and talking about the practices leading up and honestly auburn had a lot less practices i thought they were gonna have uh they took advantage of that fall break and really just an opportunity for them to get rested and get well getting up into a top 25 matchup versus the missouri tigers now this game will be taking place at 11 a.m which does tend to bode well for the performance of the away team you know you don't have a fully awake crowd uh and Auburn hasn't played terribly. That's the issue with the Auburn Tigers, and I've talked about this several, several times. The issue with this team is they've not played bad. They just can't win the games. Now, what I want to do is go through what I think Auburn needs to do to beat Missouri on Saturday. Now, my prediction and everything else will come on the Thursday show, doing the pregame, and I'll go more in depth about everything else. But I think base knowledge of this game Things Auburn has to do to get the win on Saturday, starting off with turnovers. Now, this goes both ways. Auburn cannot turn over the football as well as they have to force Missouri to turn it over. Missouri, on the year, has only lost two turnovers. One interception, one fumble. They've also gained seven. So they've gotten uh, five interceptions. And I've also gotten two fumbles. So they have a nice little margin there. Auburn can't speak for that. I have to go to page three to find Auburn. Uh, Auburn currently stands at 130th in the country in terms of turnover margin. You know, getting four interceptions on the year, but also giving the ball back to the other team 15 times. Now, Auburn has a nice little streak where they've only given it away one time over the past two games. Missouri's defense has been playing light south thus far outside of a few games that I'll talk about in just a little second. Um, But Auburn cannot fall back into where they were before Oklahoma. You can't allow defenses to take advantage of poorly designed plays, uh, poorly read plays, uh, bad throws. You have to keep the ball in yourself with yourself. You cannot... (laughs) turn over the football if you want to win this football game. And again, like I said, Auburn's not been bad about turning over the football over the past few games. But again, I've said it a few times now where Auburn's kind of made turnovers a habit. And if you make it a habit, it's easy to fall back into if you start getting careless with it. So that's step one. Cannot turn over the football, but you also need to find a way to force a Missouri offense it doesn't make a lot of mistakes turnover wise. You have to find ways to get the football from them because you have to shut down their drives. Now, looking at my second thing, looking at this Missouri defense, currently ranks number 12 in the nation. Uh, they currently also rank 38th in rush defense as well as 7th in pass defense, averaging 150 yards per game through the air and giving up 116 yards on the ground, Auburn has to stick to their brand of football to win this game. You have to be able to run against teams. Auburn had a lot of success against Georgia running the football, but the issue with the Auburn Tigers this year is whenever they're running the football very well, they stop running the ball. Going through the remainder of the year, Auburn needs to keep the run game as its main priority you know Keandre Lambert Smith is having a great year I think he's going to get it to a thousand yards on the year Cam Coleman 
absolute weapon of a of a wide receiver, as well as Malcolm Simmons, as well as Perry Thompson. Bryce Kane's going to be in that conversation eventually. You, know, like you have weapons on the wide receiver core, but the strength of your team is running the football with Jarquez Hunter and Damari Austin. You need to give those two the football. You need to take advantage of this Missouri defense. I mean, the weak spot is the run game, but this overall, this defense has played pretty solid. Again, outside of one, maybe two games. Um, so play the brand of football that you can win with. Now, you had a good strategy against Georgia. You made you made a lot of good plays. Already didn't play terribly against Georgia. They made a lot of good plays. They made a lot of uh, great strategical uh, d- d- plays that worked out in their favor. They just didn't get in the end zone enough. They made dumb bonehead mistakes. You can't make those against Missouri. When the going gets tough, hand it off to Dark West. It's, it's the easiest thing you can do in a football game is handing it off to your running back. So with that, that's like the main thing with the with this uh, offense is just keep running the football. And what I want to get into next is, yes, you need to run the football, but L- Missouri's worst performances defensively came at the chagrin of a balanced attack. Now, Connor Wegman threw for 276 yards on this defense. Uh, Thomas Castanalos uh, threw for 249 yards and three touchdowns against Missouri. The issue with Boston College is he also threw two interceptions, and they couldn't get a run game started. A&M, on the other chance, they rushed for 236 yards alongside. A balanced attack is what really killed Missouri. Now, does Auburn have is the talent gap is it, is there a talent gap between Missouri and Auburn? It's not that big. If there even is one, wide receivers, Auburn's going to be in for a handful. Uh, and I'll talk about that in just a second. But Auburn needs to rely on the run game, but. This might go back on what I just said earlier, but you can't completely throw away the pass game. You have to have a balanced attack because they're gonna they're gonna key in on it. But if Darkwest Hunter in third quarter is averaging like six yards a carry, he is like 13, 14 carries for like 80 something yards. I don't know the math on that. I could have had that math very wrong uh for six yards a carry. Don't back off. Uh Le'Veon Moss versus <laughs> Missouri. 12 carries, 138 yards, and three touchdowns. But he also had a 75-yard touchdown run. Jarquez needs to be your main focus in this game. Now, looking back in the Missouri offense for a second, Brady Cook has 1,300 yards on the year, seven touchdowns, only has one interception. He been, has been sacked 11 times. Now, I already mentioned you got to make him make mistakes in this game, but you also have to get to him. Uh, Brady Cook is no isn't your typical pocket passer quarterback. He's an improviser. He doesn't typically run the ball, but he will if he needs to. He has 124 yards on the year, four touchdowns on 40 carries. But you're gonna have to find ways to get to him, make him feel panicked in the pocket. You have to find ways to make him make stupid mistakes because he has a few weapons that. You free citizens press conference. This is the best wide receiver core Auburn has played thus far into the year. Now, of course, Oklahoma could have had that, but we were playing against their wide receiver four through six. I say four. I think it was like five through eight that were they were playing, but Auburn lost that game. Georgia has a very great selection of wide receivers. They just don't get utilized as much. Missouri utilizes theirs. Theo Weiss, Luther Burden, Mookie Cooper. Those guys are going to be hard to stop. Now, Auburn's secondary has been playing pretty well thus far into the year. Um, I I say pretty well, better than expected. Uh, You have freshmen going out there. Jalen Crawford. You have Caleb Harris. Uh, None of them have seen the likes of Luther Burden. 
398 yards in the year thus far, four touchdowns. Hasn't really gotten as much focus as I thought he would. Theo Weiss is also kind of balanced out, same amount of catches as, as him. But if you let Luther Burden get an open space, if you let him make that double move or make a uh, grab over you, he's going to have some highlight plays. And it's going to be up to Auburn to find ways to take him out of the ball game. Now, what Missouri has been doing very well this year is finding ways around him, using him as a, as, as like a bait and then throwing it the other way. That's what the Oasis had such a good year thus far. That's why they've had more of a balanced attack through the past game. You're going to have to find a way to keep him out of the ball game while not being so laser focused that other people have major games. Now uh, this is going to be the toughest part. Uh, and also, run, running back wise, I mean, they run the ball a lot. Nate Noel and Marcus Carroll uh, both are over 50 carries on the year. Marcus Carroll 58, 281 yards, and five touchdowns. Nate Noel 79 carries, 471 yards, and two touchdowns. Currently on the year, they have 1,125 yards rushing on the season. Now, Missouri's had a has had a little little trend where against their power five opponents they've played thus far, they've not looked great. Uh, beating Boston College 27-21, had to come back and win that game. Uh, Vanderbilt took them the double double overtime, then beat them 30-27. And A&M came in uh, in, in College Station. Uh, Missouri traveled to Texas A&M and got their butt kicked. Missouri isn't the team that I thought they were going into this year. This game is very winnable for Auburn and... Ultimately, for the Auburn Tigers, your season depends on how you play in this football game. If you go into Columbia, Missouri, and you take care of business, I'm very confident Auburn can do the same thing in Lexington. But if you go into this game, if you go into Faro Field, and you just kind of just wet the bed, you just don't look great. You took a bye week. You had, you had a week off, and you looked like all like the same old Auburn team that we thought uh, was you like the same old Auburn team we've been watching for the past few weeks. This game is pivotal in the chances of Auburn being able to play in December. Um, so ultimately, this game's winnable, and you should play your brand of football. Don't make any mistakes. Make them make the mistakes. Find a way to get a top 25 win. Great resume builder. And then you can work on Kentucky that next week. Don't get caught looking ahead. I don't know why you'd look ahead to Kentucky. But you have a tough stretch of games that are going to depend on your season. This is Missouri, Kentucky, Vanderbilt, and ULM. Those four games are your most winnable four games out of the six. And that's your only chance of really making a bowl game is to get those four wins. So... That is it for the football segment. I just want to go over that. On the other side of this break, we're going to talk about Auburn basketball because the AP poll is out as well as the Kim Palm, and one of those are better than the other. So on the other side of this break, we'll talk about a little Auburn basketball, then some Auburn gymnastics when the schedule got released, and then after that, we'll get out of here quick, fast, in a hurry. We'll be right back. Are you tired of having to rummage through just clothes after clothes after clothes looking for something to wear? Are you tired of your friends making fun of you for your terrible fashion sense? Well, do we have the shirt for you? Go to thewarreport.com, get your laptop out and do it right now. Go to the shop and get your very own Feeling Loopy t-shirt as well as your college loop hat. And you can get both of them for only $25 each. Plus shipping and handling, of course. But with that, now back to your regular scheduled program. And of course, that's available on thewarreport.com. Click the shop and go to the first page where you got the Feeling Loopy or the college loop hat. Second page, Feeling Loopy T-shirt. Go check those out. Halloween's just around the corner. We are 17 days away from Halloween uh, as I am recording this. 16 when this comes out. Uh, so make sure you get those. Today, Looper is the trending item uh, for Halloween uh, costumes. Now, Auburn basketball, AP poll. It's out. All, basketball is right around the corner. It's just next month. And it's awesome. 
Love it. 21 days to women's basketball is back. AP Paul's not for them yet, and I suspect Auburn would be ranked in that one too. They deserve it. They've earned it. But if not, they're going to be in eventually, so might as well put them in there. Uh, but going through the AP Bowl, just a quick little reaction to the AP Bowl. It sucks. It sucks. That That's pretty much the synopsis of it. Alabama comes in number two. Now, Alabama is a very good team. Um, but Auburn comes into the AP poll ranked at number 11, which I think is a load of baloney. Now, this Auburn team isn't proven, but on paper, this is the top five team in the country. This is the top three team in the country on paper. We haven't seen them play yet, but this team also plays the toughest schedule in the country. I don't know if it's other team that would that plays a schedule like Auburn has to play. You go into Duke, playing against Purdue, playing against Houston, playing in the SEC, all that jazz. Auburn comes in at number 11 in the AP poll. I think it's stupid, but let me know what you think as well. Ken Palm, though, on the other hand, has Auburn listed as the number three team in the country and has Alabama at number four. Much more realistic ranking. Um, also, preseason. Uh, basketball stuff to talk about. It's just a bunch of news. Uh, still don't know the women's stuff yet. They have not come out with their AP poll. I suspect they'll come out soon. I uh, typically just start off with the men's and then go into the women's later on. Um, but yeah, if the women aren't ranked in the AP poll, they're, we're going to be upset. Going to be very, very mad. Especially if they're, if they're getting, they better be getting votes the bare minimum. They better be high up there. Uh, Janai Broom listed as an all SEC first teamer. No shocker there. Chad Baker Mazzara listed on the third team. Uh, also, Bruce Pearl's been talking about some of the players on this team. Denver Jones is currently uh, a player that we need to look out for because Bruce Pearl said he has improved the, the most of, of the team going into this upcoming season and play more of a combo guard, which I am so excited for this basketball team. Football, uh, I mean, I was already excited for basketball season in and of itself. Though. This football season has really made me appreciate that basketball is just right around the corner. Uh, so we are, I'm trying to think of the days exactly. I think Auburn basketball plays their first game exhibition-wise on like November 1st or 2nd. I know it's one of the two. If women's basketball plays on one day, it's the other day. Uh, and I cannot spell. So that's, that's fun. Auburn basketball schedule. And I've gone over this a few times, so I should know this. Know this November first, so Auburn plays FAU in an exhibition game on November first, and the season then officially starts on November six. Auburn takes on Vermont in beautiful, wonderful Neville Arena, and of course, women's basketball they play their exhibition game against Lagrange College October thirty first. So basketball season technically starts on Halloween. Um, and then their season officially starts with the first game of the season against Southern Illinois on November fourth, and the team is going. Auburn's going to have is going to be reaping the benefits of having two March Madness teams on the same campus. So big ups to both of those. And another sport that needs a lot more appreciation. Uh, I, I, all of them do. Volleyball has been on a tear re- recently. Still ranked in the top 25. Soccer is ranked in the top 15, and they're on a tear as well. But, of course, uh, and softball and baseball, too, also on the way. Can't wait for those either. I'm I, trying to find it at my, in my schedule to make it to a fall ball game this season. But, of course, my in my top five, definitely. I'm trying to, I'm trying, if I had to rank my top like five favorite Auburn sports, softball is in there. But so is Auburn Gymnastics. And the schedule for Auburn Gymnastics has been released starting on December 18th with the preview meet. And then they'll start their season officially away on January 4th. Don't know who they're going to play for that one yet. Or January 11th. Have not named an opponent for those yet. SEC Slate starts on January 17th where they'll take on Arkansas in Neville Arena. Then next that next week, they'll take on Oregon State at home, then travel to Lexington, take on Kentucky, back home for Georgia on February 7th, February 14th on Valentine's Day, traveling to uh, Gainesville, take on the Florida Gators, then then February 21st, I'm just, it's the next week, uh, they'll travel to an airplane hangar and play that team on the other side of the state of Alabama. 
Um, back at home to take on o the Oklahoma Sooners on February 28th. March 9th, back in Columbia, take on the Missouri Tigers. And they're rounding out the season on Pi Day, taking on the defending national champion, LSU Tigers. Now, I've already been in discussion trying to figure out when exactly the um, words are hard, uh, when the tickets would come out. Uh, and ready to, ready to buy single meat tickets because I am planning on going to a few of these. I love Auburn Gymnastics. The atmosphere is ridiculous, and they're a lot of fun. So make sure to try your tickets. If you've not been to an Auburn Gymnastics meet in your life, what are you doing? Uh, make it something that you do uh, often. Uh, there are more sports at Auburn than football, and I actually got Auburn soccer rankings wrong. They're actually not top 15. Got that wrong. Number nine. So, support all Auburn athletics. Of course, football is going to be the heavy hitter. But when football is not performing well, you always got the fact that Auburn is an everything school. Every other sport has those bright, shining moments to look out for when Auburn football is disappointing us day, day after day after day. So, Auburn recruiting is going well for Auburn football. Can't wait to talk more about that later on whenever Auburn gets more commits and recruits. Fix to flips hopefully soon uh, from Auburn football because, you know, when the team's not playing well, recruiting is still A-plus peak of the of the SEC. That is it for this time of the College Loop Podcast. Thank you all for tuning in. I'm, of course, Dylan Lark, a boy on Twitter. Of course, we on Instagram as well at Dylan Lark at D-Y-L-E-N-L-A-R-C-K. Visual aids right there. And, of course, right here in the College Loop Podcast, if you like, comment, subscribe, leave your thoughts. What does Auburn need to do to beat Missouri this Saturday? And, of course, let me know what you think of Auburn being ranked number 11 in the AP poll for, for basketball. And where do you think Auburn women's basketball should start off ranked? And why is it number one in the country? But, of course, all that being said, make sure to check out the audio versions of the show as well and us on social media at The College Loop. And with all that being said, thanks for watching the song of The College Loop Podcast. And, as always, War Eagle.